In today's video, we're going to talk about dual task learning and how it is used as an implicit technique in motor learning when working with children. Let's start with a definition. Dual task learning is the learning of a skill while simultaneously performing another task. The second task can be a motor or cognitive task, but must be attention demanding. Learning a skill will simultaneously carrying out another task. Why would you do that? To better understand, we'll start with the test. These students have to perform a triple jump. In this example, the triple jump is the primary motor task. Now, a secondary cognitive task is added, which turns it into a dual task. Students have to name colors or words out loud while simultaneously perform the triple jump. Red, like. Word seven. Green, blue, red. For some students, it was difficult to perform both tasks at the same time. This depends on the amount of attention needed to perform both tasks. The reason for this is that the capacity of our working memory is limited. When you need too much capacity to perform the motor and or the cognitive task, performance will be hampered, as if you are multitasking on your old laptop. Eight. How can you use this to stimulate implicit learning? Let's see what happens in the working memory. When you only perform a motor task, you're more able to focus your attention on the execution of the movement. When this acquired conscious knowledge about the execution of the movement is stored in the long-term memory, we speak about explicit learning. When we introduce an attention-demanding secondary task, you're less likely to process the information of the primary motor task consciously. Therefore, you won't be able to store explicit knowledge in your long-term memory. So, this sounds great and all, but pay attention. Introducing this into your therapy sessions can be challenging. Let's go back to the test we did before. If you introduce a secondary task when there is not enough capacity left in their working memory, performance will start to hamper. Therefore, when a child performs a relatively new task, mistakes will occur if you combine it with a too difficult secondary cognitive task. It is crucial that you adjust the level of the secondary task to the capabilities of the child. If the task is too easy, the child can still focus on how it's moving and thereby is able to store knowledge explicitly. Thus, this means that the secondary task needs to load the working memory sufficiently and consciously. If you first do the math and then the motor task, it's not a dual task. Combining a math and a motor task is a standardized way of how to create a dual task condition. However, it is also possible to create a dual task in combination with a secondary motor task. In that case, you have to take care that the secondary task does not interfere with the primary motor task. Let's see what this looks like in practice. Okay. Ben je klaar voor? Ja. Vijfde. Super. 